Before I start the video, I want to say that a lot of people watch my videos without a subscription. If my content resonates with you, you could subscribe to the channel, thus YouTube would promote it more, which in turn would motivate me to release and improve content more often. Thank you. I remember the day I decided to try online dating. It was a beautiful sunny afternoon. I was feeling adventurous. I had heard so many stories about people finding love online and thought, why not me? I downloaded Tinder and started browsing through profiles. There were so many options, but one picture caught my eye. There was a guy named Mark, who looked very attractive and interesting. I swiped right, and we matched. We started chatting, and Mark seemed very polite and attentive to me. He was very intelligent and educated, and we discussed many different topics. I felt like we had a real connection. I was excited to meet him in person. We arranged to meet at a nearby cafe, and I dressed up for the occasion. When I arrived, Mark was already there waiting for me. He stood up when he saw me and gave me a warm smile. But as soon as we started talking, I realized that Mark was not at all what he appeared to be on the internet. He was rude and impolite, interrupting me and talking over me. He didn't seem interested in what I had to say and kept checking his phone. I felt very uncomfortable and couldn't wait for the day to be over. Plus, I noticed that he was much older than he told me in his profile. He said he was 30, but he looked closer to 40. When we said goodbye, I was relieved that the date was over. But the worst thing happened when I started walking home. I noticed Mark started to follow me, and when I turned around, he was only a few feet away from me. My heart started racing, and I sensed that he was following me. I started walking faster, but he kept following me. Then he started running, and I knew I had to do something. I quickly looked around and saw a cab parked on the street. I ran towards it and got in, telling the driver to go as fast as possible. I looked back and saw Mark standing on the sidewalk, looking angry and frustrated. After that horrible experience, I never registered on Tinder again. I understood that such apps could be dangerous, and I didn't want to run into people like that again. I felt lucky to have escaped unharmed, but the experience left me shaken and scared. Over the next few weeks, I couldn't shake off the feeling that I was being watched. I kept looking over my shoulder, expecting to see Mark following me. I started having panic attacks and couldn't leave the house without feeling anxious. One day, I decided to seek help. I talked to a therapist and told her about my experience. She listened patiently and helped me work through my fear and anxiety. She also encouraged me to report the incident to the police, which I did. The police investigated the case and found out that Mark had a history of stalking and harassment. He was arrested and charged with several offences, and I felt relieved that he was off the streets. But even after Mark was behind bars, I couldn't shake off the feeling that I was being watched. I decided to take self-defence classes and learned how to protect myself. Andrea had been single for almost a year and was starting to feel like she was never going to find the right person. She had been on a few dates from various dating apps, but none of them had really piqued her interest. That was until she stumbled upon the OCupid app. After a few days of swiping through profiles, Andrea finally matched with a man named Mark. He was 28, worked as a chef, and had a few pictures of himself in his kitchen, which Andrea found impressive. They exchanged a few messages and soon enough, they arranged to meet in person. The day of the date arrived and Andrea felt a mix of excitement and nervousness. She decided to wear her favourite dress, the one that always made her feel confident. She arrived at the bar where they had agreed to meet and Mark was already waiting for her. He was tall with dark hair and a friendly smile. They'd ordered drinks and began to chat. Andrea felt like they were hitting it off and she was relieved that Mark seemed normal and kind. Then, he suggested they play billiards, which Andrea thought was a fun idea. During the game, Mark revealed something that made Andrea feel uneasy. He told her that he had a rough childhood and that he had stabbed another student at school. The scary thing was that the man didn't regret it and said he deserved that ending. Andrea tried to brush it off, thinking that maybe he was just trying to be edgy or make a joke, but it didn't sit well with her. 
As they continued to play, Mark made a strange compliment to Andrea. He said that if he had killed her, he would have made a ham out of the bottom and hung the top in his room and admired it. Andrea's heart started racing and she began to think of a way to escape as soon as possible. Suddenly, her phone rang and she quickly answered it, pretending it was an emergency. A friend on the other end of the line played along and Andrea told Mark she had to leave immediately to catch the last train. He clearly didn't want to say goodbye, but he walked her to the station after all. Once she was safely on the train, Andrea breathed a sigh of relief. She couldn't believe how creepy and disturbing the date had been. She vowed to never go on a date with someone she met online again. After the date, Mark still texted Andrea, trying to explain why she needed a bad guy. Andrea was firm in her response, telling him that she didn't like him and that she never wanted to hear from him again. For a long time, Andrea was hesitant to date men from dating sites. Now she prefers to get acquainted in real life. The girl says you should always listen to your intuition and leave if you feel uncomfortable. It is our right to say no. A few months passed and Andrea had pretty much given up on the idea of finding someone through dating apps. She had been going out more with her friends, focusing on her career and just enjoying her life as a single woman. That was until one day when she was out shopping for groceries. As she was browsing the produce section, she bumped into a man who was reaching for a carton of eggs. They both apologized and smiled at each other, and Andrea felt a strange connection with him. They struck up a conversation about their favorite recipes, and before she knew it, they had been chatting for almost an hour. His name was James, and he was a personal trainer. He was kind funny and had a great smile. Andrea felt like they had a real connection, and she couldn't believe she had met someone so perfect for her in the most unexpected way. They exchanged numbers and arranged to meet for coffee the following weekend. The date with James was everything Andrea had hoped for and more. They had a great conversation, and Andrea felt like they had a real connection. They had similar interests and shared a love of cooking. James even showed her a few new recipes that he had been working on, and Andrea was impressed by his culinary skills. After the date, James walked Andrea to her car, and they hugged goodbye. Andrea felt a flutter in her stomach, and she knew that she wanted to see him again. They arranged to meet up the following weekend, and from that day on, they started dating. Andrea couldn't believe how different her experience with James was compared to her previous dates from dating apps. She felt like they had a real connection, and she was grateful for the unexpected way they had met. After a few months of dating, James asked Andrea to be his girlfriend, and she happily accepted. They continued to go on adventures together, trying new restaurants, hiking in the mountains, and even taking a cooking class together. Andrea realized that sometimes the best things in life come when you least expect them. She was grateful for the experience with Mark, as it taught her to always trust her intuition, but she was even more grateful for the unexpected connection she had found with James. As a young woman in my mid-twenties, I had always thought that finding the perfect soulmate was going to be easy. I had grown up on romantic comedies and fairy tale stories that filled my head with visions of happy endings, and I believed that all it took was one magical moment to meet my Prince Charming. But as it turned out, the real world was a far cry from those stories. As I grew older, I realized that finding love wasn't always as easy as the movies made it out to be. I had tried my luck at various social events, but nothing seemed to work out. It was during one of my lowest points that I decided to try online dating. I had heard stories of couples who had met online and gone on to live happily ever after, and I thought that maybe I could be one of them. So, I downloaded Tinder and created my profile. It was a bit intimidating at first, with various men swiping left and right on my profile. But then I received a message from a man named Josh, and my heart fluttered. Josh was everything I had ever wanted in a partner. He was charming witty and had a great sense of humor. We quickly hit it off and I found myself looking forward to our conversations and eventual dates. But then things started to take a dark turn. Josh became increasingly possessive and jealous, questioning me about my interactions with other men and making me feel guilty for any male friends I had. 
he would often call me late at night and demand to know my whereabouts. At first, I thought it was just a minor hiccup in our relationship, but then it became clear that Josh was becoming controlling and manipulative. He began dictating what I wore, where I went, and how I spent my money. Despite my reservations, I found myself becoming more and more attached to Josh. He had a way of making me feel like I was the only person in the world that mattered, and I was willing to overlook his flaws in order to keep him in my life. But one day, I finally reached my breaking point. I realized that I couldn't continue living in fear and being controlled by Josh's toxic behavior. I ended the relationship and thought that would be the end of it. Unfortunately, it was just the beginning of my nightmare. Josh's reaction to our breakup was violent and threatening. He began stalking me, sending me angry and threatening messages, and showing up at my work and home I invited. I was terrified and didn't know what to do. That's when I decided to turn to the police for help. They were sympathetic and understanding, and they immediately took action to protect me from Josh's abuse. It wasn't easy, but with their help, I was eventually able to sever all contact with him and begin to heal. Looking back on my experience with Josh, I realized now that I had fallen into a trap. I had been so eager to find love that I had overlooked the warning signs of his abusive behavior. But my story is a lesson for anyone else who might be tempted to ignore the signs in order to keep their dream of love alive. Love should never come at the cost of your safety and well-being, and it's important to always listen to your gut and walk away from any relationship that doesn't feel healthy or safe. And most importantly, it's never too late to ask for help if you find yourself in a situation like mine.